Welcome to the channel, and today, last but not least, we are talking about the NL West. We're on our way to 400 subscribers, so if you're looking for more baseball insight today, feel free to subscribe down below. The more subscribers will help the content get pushed out to more baseball fans. If you like today's video, leave me a thumbs up. If not, leave me a thumbs down, and please leave me a comment at the end. Tell me what you think. Let's start off with last place. I have the San Francisco Giants. The Giants lost franchise icon Madison Bumgarner, and they also lost Kevin Pillar, but they did bring in some depth guys like Kevin Gosman and Drew Smiley. That offense has a lot left to be desired, and they're hoping for a bounce back season from Buster Posey and they're hoping Mike Yastrzemski can take another step forward. They are going to be without Madison Bumgarner but they are getting Johnny Cueto and Jeff Samarja back for full seasons this year. But other than those guys there really isn't much else. I could really see this team struggling in the first half and I could see them trading off guys by the trade deadline and they are going to go into full rebuild mode. I see this team finishing with a record of 66 and 96. Coming in fourth place, I have the Colorado Rockies. This team had quite the offseason and not for really good reasons. They had all the Nolan Arenado trade rumors. Now Nolan Arenado and the front office have beef because Nolan Arenado didn't think the front office did enough to make this team better. So that's going to be an interesting one this year. However, I still like some pieces on this team. Along with Nolan Arenado, you still have Trevor Story, Charlie Blackman, David Dahl, Ryan McMahon. There are some decent pieces here. And Brendan Rodgers, their top prospect, should be back around May or June. But the pitching is going to be a concern again. Out of this group, John Gray is really the only solid one. They're hoping for a bounce back season from Kyle Freeland. He was really good a couple years ago and he just fell off the face of the earth last year. They're also hoping Herman Marquez can take a step forward this year. He was okay last year, but the bullpen is also a concern. Wade Davis was absolutely terrible last year and that guy is making some pretty good money. In the end, I just don't think this team has enough pitching. They have a decent offense, but there's not enough pitching there. This team is gonna finish with a record of 80 and 82. Coming in third place, I have the San Diego Padres. This is an interesting team, and they have some pretty decent pieces in that offense. They got a superstar in the making in Fernando Tatis Jr., but they also signed Manny Machado long-term last season, as well as Eric Hosmer a couple years ago. They also traded for Tony Pham in the offseason. He is a really solid player. As for the pitching, they're hoping Chris Paddock can take another step forward, and they're hoping for more from Garrett Richards this year. There's also other guys like Zach Davies, Joey Lichessi. They're hoping Cal Quantrill can take a step forward this year, but keep an eye out for Mackenzie Gore, the top prospect in their system. They have a lot of decent depth guys there. In the bullpen, they have the best closer from last year in Kirby Yates, and they have Drew Pomeranz, who they re-signed this offseason. They also traded for Emilio Pagan. He was a really good reliever for the Rays last year. Overall, I think this team is going to be pretty good this year. They're going to finish with an 85-78 and 78 record, but that's only going to be good enough for third place. Coming in second place, I have the Arizona Diamondbacks. I really like the Diamondbacks this year. This team made a lot of good moves this offseason. They signed Madison Bumgarner, Cole Calhoun, Wilmer Flores, Junior Guerrera, and they also traded for Starling Marte pretty late in the offseason. With the addition of a proven ace in Madison Bumgarner and guys like Robbie Ray, Luke Weaver, Mike Leake, and Zach Gallen behind him, that rotation could be really good this year. And that offense is going to be solid. You have the two Martes at the top of that order, Cattell Marte, who is a stud, and Starling Marte, who is really good as well. In the middle of that order, you're going to have Eduardo Escobar, Christian Walker, Cole Calhoun. And if they can get more out of that 2018 David Peralta, that lineup is going to be really good. And the bullpen is also going to be solid. I think Archie Bradley is going to have a smoother year this year. And then behind him, you have Andrew Chafin, Yoan Lopez, Kevin Ginkle routing out the bullpen. Overall, I think this team is being really overlooked. While I don't think they're going to win first place in the National League West this year, I think they're going to be a really good team and they're going to come in second this year with a 95 and 67 record, which will be good enough for one of the two wildcard spots. And coming in first place, what do you know, the LA Dodgers. I mean, really. I could just end it here. What else is there to say? This team is stacked. They already had an MVP in Cody Bellinger, and they added another former MVP in Mookie Betts, who's still one of the best players in the league. Behind those guys, you're going to have Justin Turner, Max Muncy, Corey Seager, Jock Peterson, Gavin Lux is on the rise. And while they did lose Hing Jin Ryu this past offseason, they got David Price back in that Mookie Betts trade. When he is healthy, he's one of the better pitchers in this game. He's going to go right behind Clayton Kershaw and Walker Buehler. Behind those guys, you have Julio Urias, Alex Wood, and younger guys like Dustin May and Tony Gonsolin. 
And the bullpen has plenty of firepower. There's Kelly Jansen, Pedro Baez, Joe Kelly. They signed Blake Trainin. He was one of the best relievers in baseball a couple years ago. And they also traded for Bruce Dark Gratterall. Overall, this team has a good mix of everything. An amazing offense, a great rotation, a solid bullpen, a mix of young guys, a mix of veterans. This is the easy pick for the NL West in 2020. But that's just my opinion. Tell me what you think. Who is going to win the NL West this year? As always, have a great day. Thanks for watching today, and I'll talk to you next time.